Hello, and welcome to Please Me. Last week, Eve interviewed Jake Dodinsky, a self-proclaimed kinkster, furry, and dog player who is the creator of Lobo events. These events are inclusive of all sexualities, abilities, and disabilities, and bring awareness to the need for more sexual education regarding sexuality and disability. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Eve is a licensed sexual health physical therapist on a mission to destigmatize conversations about sex. Please sit back and surrender to the pleasure of Please Me. Who's looking for a sexy date? STC.com is the premier ethically non-monogamous dating site that also houses a wealth of information regarding sexuality and sexual health. Join the Please Me Health Collective on STC.com and listen to Eve's free live webinars. Use code 37340 for a free trial membership. Maybe you are in the market for some sexy toys to add some spice to the bedroom. Check out the Organic Lovin' link for the best online store for sex toys, lubes, and more. And then I thought maybe I should tone down the part where I mentioned pornography and the statistics on rape. Maybe I should tone that down. I went for a drive to go pick up my lunch, and I said, okay, when I come back, I'll remove this paragraph. On my way to pick up my lunch, the car in front of me, I've never seen this before or after, its license plate was a porn website. I was like, this has got to be a sign. Here I am, a lesbian, a feminist, writing a feminist book, thinking, oh, maybe I should remove this paragraph of actual statistics. Are you suffering from erectile dysfunction in silence? Are you embarrassed by premature ejaculation? Is it hard to get an erection that is long enough for penetration or that lasts long enough to satisfy your partner and yourself? Just know that you are not alone and that 20% of men suffer from erectile dysfunction in their 20s and it goes up 10% per decade. So 50% of men in their 50s will have some form of erectile dysfunction. My name is Eve Hall, a licensed physical therapist who treats conditions such as erectile dysfunction and other sexual health conditions. I'm here to tell you that there is a solution to erectile dysfunction, and I offer the gold standard in my practice called Inspire Health Physical Therapy and Wellness. I have a full protocol to get your sexy back, so know that I am here to help. Just know that there is no shame in having any sexual health condition, including erectile dysfunction. If that is you, be sure to reach me on sdc.com and leave me a message there, or reach me on pleaseme.online to listen to my podcasts, or to leave me a message and book an appointment today. Hello, and welcome to Please Me, the podcast that aims to destigmatize conversations about sex by turning the sheets into our classroom. Today, I am bringing on Dr. Zion Salam, and she has coined herself a dimension-digging MD who seeks to heal the world of our three spiritual diseases. Zion graduated third in her class, and in her spare time, she studied, listen to this, quantum physics, and this led her to energy. She says that energy is the link between science and spirituality. Her novel, With Love, from Planet B, caused her spiritual awakening, and I cannot wait to hear all about it. So without further ado, I want to bring on Zion to the show. Please me. Hello, Zion. Welcome to Please Me today. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be here. I am so excited to hear what you have to say about this book. It sounds so interesting. I want to know about the three spiritual diseases that you talk about in the book. Can you give us a little preview? Yeah, so this is a speculative science fiction book with a real touch of uh, spirituality embedded throughout. It's based in the future where they discover planet B. And our two heroines have to make their own individual journeys to get there alone. Once they get there, they find an advanced human race. They don't call themselves human. They call themselves the sanity seekers. And they basically say, hold up, before we let you in to our planet, we have to analyze you and make sure you're safe for us. And then they diagnose humanity on Earth with three spiritual diseases that then have mental, emotional, and even physical effects right down to our bodies. 
Wow, that is so interesting. And when you look at the state of our planet today and the damage that humanity has caused it, I can completely see that we are suffering from a multitude of different diseases. So I find that super interesting. And one of the things that you brought up in the book is the gender of God. Can you go into that a little bit? Yes. So of the three, they say the second one, which is also the most heinous disease, the most disturbing disease that for them is that on earth, 95% of people, if not more, call God a he. They use the pronoun he. And a lot of these people literally believe God is actually a man or more like a man than a woman. And a lot of them even imagine a man. A lot of them imagine a man-like figure in the sky. All of these things have a very deep and powerful subconscious effect. And this effect, now you got to multiply it by the last thousands of years that human beings have been following this concept. The concept of God is probably, arguably, the most powerful concept your brain can hold. You're told this is God. It created the whole universe. And now if you replace it or the energy, whatever it is, we don't know what it is, right? It's so bigger, so much bigger than us. Now if you're told over and over again, he created the universe, his laws, his punishment, his this, his that. Those are very powerful and very harmful subconscious beliefs and commands, actual commands and orders that are going into our brain from when we were little kids all the way to our deathbed. It's a form of abuse, really. And they say this is no question a spiritual disease. There's nowhere where it makes any sense in the entire universe. I love those aliens because they got it right, in my opinion. So when I visit planet B, I hope I fit right in because I have always considered God to be a goddess. Because if I am made in God's image, then God should look like me, right? And that goes for everybody. So I'm not saying that God is a woman or a man. God is everything, like you said, all encompassing, right? And so it is many images and it's not just a man. And so anytime I refer to God, I always say she <laughs> and have done that for years and years because I just intrinsically feel that way. So it's super interesting. That's one of the diseases that the aliens point to as being super heinous and the worst virus of all in our human brains, right? Or in our human bodies. Interesting. Can we talk a little bit, because you mentioned the rebellion of our youth or the gender rebellion of our youth. And I'm curious to know what you have to say about that. I have kids that are quite young and as I'm watching them develop, I'm seeing so many different things that they're learning about. And I'm curious to know what you have to say. Yeah, sure. It's a lot of people aren't talking about it yet, so I'm not sure if the terminology has developed. But if you think of humankind as a system, we are now 8 billion of us all over the world. We're now connected through the internet, through television. There's like a homogeneity going on where we're becoming similar, learning what's appropriate, what's not, changing our value systems. And like in chemistry, when you have a certain critical mass of something, certain things will have to change. Certain problems will start to show up and really materialize. So I feel like this is a time in humanity when that's happening with gender. A lot of people are going to find it very uncomfortable, unfortunately, and it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. I believe what's happening is, first of all, there's an awakening, like you said, of people saying, why are we calling God a he? Enough people speaking out loud is having an effect all over the world. Secondly, because it's bigger than us, even if we hadn't thought about it, I feel like it's bigger than us. We are part of a system. We will in the future hopefully have AIs or computers studying us on a mass level and we will discover so much more about us and add a dimension to that, studying us over time, over generations. I believe it's really time for people to question gender on every level. Some of uh, we might get it wrong along the way. I, some people getting it wrong, some people going to extreme, some people maybe fighting it too much. But the younger generation is definitely questioning gender roles. We did that as millennials. 
And even before that, Gen Xers started doing that. Gen Z is just about, I believe, 24% of them identify as LGBTQIA and or they don't want to identify at all. They're very open-minded. This, I think, in my the way I see the world, it's connected to this most powerful concept in our mind, which is God's gender. And because we have messed up that department right at the top, we have you call it a lie or you could call it a virus or a disease, but something's not right. It doesn't speak to the human heart and to the human brain. And we're going to rebel against that. I believe the real gender pronoun battle needs to be at the God level. And if we fixed that, I believe we'll fix all of the pain at the lower levels where people's children are fighting with their parents too much. I see parents who are really upset about these things and they're really confused and scared and then politically, they're made to be even more scared as if it's the worst thing going on. But if my little shortcut to fixing the problem, I might say, is can we focus on God's gender? Imagine a world where we didn't have that. And I'm thinking in my diagnostic process, a lot of these things would just even out with love. It would just be like, oh, okay, I understand now. And just to go a little deeper, because telling a little girl that God is a he has its own detrimental effect to her sense of self. She could have been, it's not even about who she becomes. It's also about how she feels, but she could have been a lot greater or she could have felt, simply felt a lot greater, which she won't feel those feelings now because you've done this abuse to her mind and her soul. At the same time, there's another effect happening on the male children when we're telling them God is a he. A lot of these effects, I'm not saying I can draw a straight line and uh, actually say this is how it actually truly connects. But I do believe it's connected to this gender rebellion that we're going to be seeing, that we are seeing. And the more we try to deny that we are spiritual beings and we have souls and that's who we really are, the more we'll see people who will be like, no, my soul doesn't feel like this. My soul feels like something's wrong. And I truly believe a lot of kids will be born to balance out that gap, that missing divine feminine energy. They will just totally go all the way, fight with their parents, fight with society. And maybe what's happening in the bigger picture is the divine feminine is awakening. We are going to blend in gender to where we'll just have to accept it. What's, what's man-made and what is truly nature? What's really natural? What's normal versus what's natural? If that makes any sense. <laughs> Yes, normal is what society makes it, right? But normal can change and normal is changing. And like you said, our youth is having this gender rebellion where they're really questioning their gender roles in society. And henceforth, a million different categories have erupted overnight practically. I'm still trying to wrap my head around new ones that come out almost every day. And it's, oh, yeah. I guess that's me too. Oh, that's me too. And I'm like, I'm this and I'm that. And my kids are doing the same thing. And I didn't know about that statistic that 24% of the younger generation identified as a part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I think that's a beautiful thing because they really are broadening their minds to the possibility of love in their life coming to them in different forms. It doesn't always have to be a heteronormative form. It can be a different form. Love is for everybody. And I'd say that constantly on this podcast, that everybody is deserving of love and of pleasure. So why don't we touch a little bit upon your concept of love? I mean, come at it this way. When the aliens are studying humankind and they've, in an instant, they've hacked our entire internet in another instant, they have studied our entire internet. There was a rumor going around, which I think some people believe is a fact still, which says 30% of the internet is pornography. And I actually looked up into it. There's a lot of articles that say that. And then you have the fact checking articles, which says it's not really 30%, it's 4%. But in the, okay. dystopian, yeah, in, in the dystopian future, I imagined which is based on the attention economy because the book's about a lot of stuff. It's about economy and spirituality and love mostly. The attention economy is where what we speak about, what we think about, even every word we say, what we're watching, 
they know how much attention we're giving to everything on our screens, which they already have starting doing that. And the more attention something gets, the more popular and the more money it gets from the future attention economy in which the corporations are basically controlling everything. So the future attention economy, a lot of people give their attention to porn. And so I figure people already believe 30% of the internet is porn. What if it actually is in the year 2085? So I made it to that 30 to 40% of the internet in the future is porn. And that's what people are giving their attention to. So it makes sense. It would be a big part of the future attention economy. And the uh, aliens studied in an instant and they're like, these are actually real statistics I took from 2018, which I put as future statistics, but they're already so disturbing. 90 to 100% of porn is all about fellatio. It's all about male pleasure. And they make it a point in the study that I read to show the male orgasm. A lot of the female orgasms we see, as most people already know, they're fake on porn. And maybe around 10 to 20% of the videos are actually based on cunnilingus. It's not really about heterosexual intercourse where you're thinking about male genitalia versus female and, and not versus <laughs> combining, meeting the female genitalia. It's very, the male God worship is very evident in porn. And definitely. Yes. What's also literally happening, which I wish more humans on earth would wake up to it, is we are sending these radio waves of this very kind of misogynistic porn. All of these videos we're making, they're radio waves. We're literally beaming them out to the universe. Yes. So if there were an alien species watching us, they would literally see that. And who's to say they would be like, wow, you guys are messed up in the head. Like, like, why don't you love your women? Why is the whole world getting off to female degradation? Why is it like this? So all of this comes from obviously a very serious place of, of discovering it for myself and the hurt that I felt. I felt, I don't remember what, I think I was 15 years old when I discovered it. And for a whole year, because I was maybe living in La Land where I thought, Men actually love women. And then you'd see it. And then I started understanding what the jokes the boys made were about. It was, wow, this is what they're watching. This is what they're believing. Now I know what their jokes mean. So that's a lot of hurt that takes place, especially in teenage girls. And to imagine now girls are watching it as young as, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I don't know what kind of effect it's happening on them. But yeah, it's very serious. I really do believe it's a problem. It's a major problem and human humanity needs to fix it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with porn per se, but I feel like the misogyny and the tilt in favor of the male, it's so severe. It definitely needs to be balanced out. At least make it equal if you can. That's a dare. I'm daring all the companies out there. <laughs> equal. And also take the woman's permission. And now with deep fake, it's getting more and more out of hand in the male's favor instead of getting balanced. And we, we need to fix that. I think I went off on a tangent. I'm sorry. No, not, you didn't at all. No, I've talked about porn many times on this podcast and always saying that most of the time it's male centered and it focuses on male pleasure and not female pleasure. And there are a small group of women owned pornography companies that are changing the narrative there, but still, for the most part, what in pornography is male-centered and focuses on male pleasure, which is why the orgasm gap exists to a big degree. It's not just the porn industry. There's so many other reasons why that is. But, you know, everything that you see in the media, when you see even a regular show uh, depicting sexuality, and sex is, you know, penetration, which is how men orgasm, not how women orgasm. And absolutely, you're, the fellatio that you're talking about earlier, that is almost in every single porn scene, right? How often do we see the opposite, the cunnilingus in those scenes? Very infrequently. And so it's always a focus on male pleasure and the orgasm gap continues to perpetuate. And it's the biggest reason why I talk about the orgasm gap in season one and season two, every single episode, because 
I started an orgasm revolution where I'm teaching people about the orgasm gap. <laughs> You're welcome. And what exactly it is and how you can change it for yourself. Um, how you can close your own individual orgasm gap. Because if you're in a heteronormative relationship, or that's the type of relationship that you normally choose, more than likely you will have an orgasm gap in your relationship. And so closing that orgasm gap for each and every person in that type of relationship is so important and understanding what it is so important. So that's why I am always talking about this because it is to me such an important thing because like I said before, we all deserve love and we all deserve pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. And misogyny, you mentioned the hatred against women is part of that. Not all porn is about hating women, but just in general, it's just such a common way of a, a belief system that is a disease in our world. And I love what you said earlier that the con the consciousness of our earth or, and our world is changing because we are now all connected. And that's what I love about having a podcast is that it can really reach all different places on earth. And that is a goal of mine because I do believe that women need to speak up more and need to tell their partners what makes them tick, what makes them feel good and express that. Because without that, we will always have an orgasm gap. Are you in menopause, perimenopause or postmenopause? I have found the absolute best products called Parlor Games. I use the Estriol and Progesterone topical creams and they have been game changers. Maybe you've listened to the show and want to be featured as a guest. Eve uses Podmatch to connect with new or potential guests. Reach out and begin the process today. Let's talk a little bit about feminism. Do you want to jump into that? Sure. Um, okay. The whole book is a very feminist book, although I would argue it's all about balance and equality, but in today's world, it would be branded as a feminist book. Yes. It goes really deep. Coming back to the second disease and why feminism even exists, and we've talked about God and the orgasm gap. What if how our beliefs affect our reality? One of the things that aliens tell us in a book is because you've been worshiping the male God and you've had this misogyny for so many thousands of years, it's materialized in your body, in, in your DNA. And what they find really disturbing is that on earth, women are getting pregnant without having an orgasm. Because on their world, that's just a no. Both sides have to orgasm to have to be pregnant. Wow. There's no rape on that planet or anything like that. And I think it's pretty plausible because this book started me on my own spiritual awakening in so many ways. I started having signs and synchronicities. If I may share one really quick. Yes, please. Because I had a number of editors and I wanted to know if my messages are, are getting across and if they're not coming out too harshly. And my first editor, she was the wrong one for the job. She was very living in her own bubble. She had no idea the things I was talking about. So I thought maybe I should tone things down. I did. And then I thought maybe I should tone down the part where I mentioned pornography and the statistics on rape. Maybe I should tone that down. I went for a drive to go pick up my lunch. And I said, okay, when I come back, I'll remove this paragraph. On my way to pick up my lunch, the car in front of me, I've never seen this before or after, its license plate was a porn website. Okay. Interesting. In front of me, I was like, this has got to be a sign. Here I am, a lesbian, a feminist, writing a feminist book, thinking, oh, maybe I should remove this paragraph of actual statistics because it might disturb some people. Here's what a woman is thinking, right? How I've been programmed to think. And I go for a drive and the dude in the car in front of me is literally sporting a porn website on his license plate. That's the difference. In, there's so many gaps here. There are so many gaps we have to fill, right? So I was like, nope, that's a sign. I'm, I'm keeping it in there. <laughs> I'm not removing this. And I'm so glad that you did. It's so important for us to understand that there needs to be a balance. And I'm really happy that you said that you were a feminist and a lesbian, because you're the first lesbian, actually, that I've had on the show talking about this in particular. And I think it's so important because we are all one. We are all connected. And I, myself, after having gotten divorced, 
started to experiment with gender. And now I consider myself bisexual. Whereas before I hadn't even given that option a thought. And so I think it's really important to understand that gender is really not just gender, not gen gender, but sexuality is fluid. It's not so black and white. And we tend to make it so black and white, but it's not black and white. There's so many nuances. And so I am so happy that you said that. And you are from another country. I believe it's Pakistan, correct? Yes. What is life like for a lesbian in Pakistan? I know you don't live in Pakistan. You live in the U.S., right? What, kind, what state are you from? I'm in Florida right now. Oh, me too. Okay, great. So we're both Floridians. We definitely need to get together. But it's important for everybody, women and men, to see doctors and physical therapists and people in their communities talking about their sexuality and their choice. And I just think it's really super important. So thank you for having said that. What in your country is it like to be not heteronormative? They don't see you. They don't acknowledge it. It's maybe like a constant, your whole life is a gaslighting experience where nobody really is there to understand your experience at all. There's a huge gap. I don't feel like, I feel like Americans don't really realize just how much better life is here in, and how much freedom we have here on all levels. It's even the power of this country compared to four countries are, are really poor. And the religion gosh, and the whole male dot worship, the whole heteronormative, that's all they want to see. I would just be uh, limited to trying to find other lesbians online. And that's it. You try to get your little bubble of friends who are probably all online. Things are changing a little bit because of West is changing the entire narrative and the world is connected, thank God, because of the internet. But it's still not at all like you can just go out to to a club or you can just go out with with a haircut that you have you can't be like that in other countries it's a constant struggle it's not safe either and that's the scary thing the horrifying things that are perpetuated against women when they are not part of or believe in the system that they're in and it's a very scary thing and yes we are very fortunate to live in the united states because we do have a lot of freedoms here but we're losing our freedoms with roe versus wade being overturned this is huge and these are some of the things that you talk about in your book as predictions right can you go into that a little bit and how you feel like women are starting to lose some of their rights, I guess we would say, which is exactly what it is. We're losing our rights. Yeah. For the predictions I made in my book, I basically took the strong forces that exist today and just multiply that by time and by size. And I wasn't into politics back then. I didn't know that there was this whole seven mountain mandate and, and all of these Christian extremists who had been working on banning abortion. I didn't know all of that, but I definitely saw in, in the future, they're going to ban abortion. They're going to keep trying again and again. It's going to be a constant battle. And then it goes, it's a dystopian novel. It even goes into, they're probably going to invent a, a womb, an auto womb or something like it. There's real, there's a real disease in our world. There's real misogyny. There's, I don't know if you're on TikTok and you, you've seen some of the kind of things that young men are saying about mandated rape. Even there's all sorts of ideas out there that are very dangerous and misogynistic. It's like the women are listening to their own narrative and the men have started listening to this very extreme narrative as well. So nothing's off the table. We have to stay awake and alert and we have to keep fighting for our rights. Now they've given a rapist more rights than a woman. It's, it's evil. There's no other word for it. The kind of things that are happening. Another thing that was predicted was all these three Abrahamic religions. I talk about them a lot on my own TikTok account. The Abrahamic religions being a very large force on earth and the three of them, basically Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the, the main male God-worshipping religions, patriarchs, who just erased all the matriarchs from our history. They are, they're going to pull a lot of people into their fights. They're, they're going to, it's, it's going to be, it's all going to be on the lower level though. We can rise above it. And I think more and more people should, no matter what religion you're born under, please 
go connect with your soul, meditate. You don't need anything between you and source, you and God. Go directly there and become spiritual rather than religious. There's just so much peace on that side. I love that you say that because my personal journey involves having been sexually abused by five people um, before I was 11. And yes, and and this is unfortunately the case for many women, 35% of women and 25% of men have experienced sexual abuse in their past. So I'm one of many, right? What that taught me was that I didn't have a right to my own body. I didn't have a right to have boundaries. I didn't have a right to say no. And learning that was a very big journey for me. And part of that was claiming that God was you know, a a, a version of who I am, the divine feminine, and really connecting to the divine feminine within me. So I definitely think that spirituality is so important um, for people to really connect with their true energy source. So I definitely appreciate that you said that. So let's go into my last question for you, because we're starting to get to the point where we have to wrap it up here. But I want to ask you, What tools do you bring into the bedroom to really help you to connect with your spirituality and with yourself? All right. I'm going to be totally open here, okay? I don't know if any of your readers have seen Goop on Netflix and they talk about energetics. Energetics are people who, and I think anyone can learn to be an energetic, who will feel the energy kind of run through their body. And I don't know if any of your listeners have had energy gasms. I was having them and I had no idea what they were with, I think, three or four partners, which is not just a coincidence. And I've thought about, after I watched Goop, I was like, oh, that's what's happening to me. It's a thing. It's not just me. There is not a lot of sex scenes in my book. It's not as spicy, but there is one. In case someone does read the book, that is based partially on my real experience. A lot of the things in the book are pays, are based on things that I've experienced, especially in meditation and stuff like that. But I think what I'm doing is I want to make love, right? It's not about having sex. It's not about getting the girl. It's not about any of that. It's when I'm going to the bedroom with someone, it's I'm going to make the most beautiful love I can. It's going to be awesome. It's coming from a pure place. We've been honest with each other. We're being safe. And this is about really like just being in this act of almost divine worship. All right. Not worship in one person's being degraded. Maybe I should use another word, but it's just love. You go in with love and I'm going to be totally honest here. If it's legal where you are, a little micro dose of cannabis can help relax people until they start feeling the energies that are already flowing through your body. And you can become an energetic. You can start feeling energy lines run through your body into her body. There's even this grid that forms around us made with all these energy lines. And sometimes a couple of my ex partners told me they can feel me inside of them and there's nothing there. So I, I, I hope people appreciate what a big thing this is, what I'm saying. It's your energy. It's your energy. It's energy. And there's mm-hmm. these energy gasms are a real thing. And it's all, I feel like it's definitely love-based. Love is the most powerful thing. You, you need to go in there with the right attitude. You got to be the person who is just in love with love. And that is now my, ever since I learned that it was actually a thing and not a fluke, I'm like, okay, I want more of that. If I feel like if you, if people do chi energy, energy exercises or meditations where you're building that ball in your hand and you're familiarizing yourself with your body's chi, like chi from ancient China, that chi or prana is what the yogis used to call it. It's an electromagnetic field that exists around us. And maybe that's the next sexual revolution. Maybe people will be tuning into that. And I'm just uh, curious to find out more about that. It's even safer. It's like this safe spiritual sex, which is even more intimate because you can literally feel the lines and you can sometimes see them in your mind when you're in that state connecting the two of you. So 
I hope that made sense to people. I hope I didn't say anything. It makes sense, but it also doesn't to me because I'm trying to envision what you're saying and I'm thinking of it as being very much not touching. Are we talking about like actual physical touch with? Okay, so both physical and spiritual were connecting there. Both physical and energetic. Okay. The ener energetic is very close to the spiritual realm, but it's physical and it's energetic. And it's energetic. So we're yes. connecting the physical and energetic. And that is where you want to be. If you're only having physical sex, you're only going to um, experience a certain level of pleasure. But if you're adding to it the energetics, which love is an energy, right? So if you're adding the energetics and the love component, you're going to be able to take that to a completely different dimension. And I recently had somebody on the show, but we were talking about sacred sexuality. And to me, sex is sacred. I've always thought of it that way. And love is really the ultimate when it comes to having sex. Because you are connecting from heart to heart. And, and so that's why I consider myself polyamorous because how can you limit love? You can have a relationship, but how can you limit love? Love is endless. Love is, goes on and on. So it is really a beautiful thing when you can connect to that energy within you and then share that with the person that you care about. Or even... In hookup sex, right? Don't you think that would make it so much better <laughs> if you were really trying to connect spiritually and giving your love to someone else? It wasn't just a physical act, but you were really trying to hone in on that energy. It is going to make sex much, much yeah. more enjoyable. Something to think about out there. <laughs> so I want to make sure that my listeners can find you. Where can my listeners find you? Yeah, I have a website for my book. It's called planetbethebook.com. And if you guys go there, my book is, there are all these links I put in there. You can, I made my book really cheap because I want it to spread. I want these messages to spread. I want people to read it no matter where they are in Africa or in China or India or Pakistan. And the audiobook is free with Spotify Premium. The link is in the website or you can just Google with love from Planet B. I would love it if you guys leave reviews because reviews mean everything. It's also the ebook is even free on all the other websites except for Amazon for a time being. The print book is out and I think it looks great. So the hardcover is also out, I believe, this week. So please go check it out. If you want to follow me uh, per se, I do have a TikTok account and it's called the same thing as my book, With Love from Planet B. So you'll just see my face all over it. <laughs> That's where you can find me. I would love to uh, meet you guys. If you can leave a comment on the website or just say hi on TikTok. Absolutely. Look out for that because this book sounds fascinating. I'm definitely going to be getting the hardcover. <laughs> and don't forget to check out my social media pages. I have Instagram, Facebook, and I also am on TikTok. So please check out my social media and follow me there so that you know when the next guest is going to be coming up and what we're going to be talking about. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And Zion, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was such a great conversation. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It was total pleasure. Wow. Total pleasure, everybody. Until next time. Looking for the best live streaming or podcast recording site? Look no further than StreamYard get $10 off your first purchase. For podcast hosting, Buzzsprout is the absolute best option out there. Get $20 off your first purchase. Feel free to call me on the OWL app. Use code EH576472 for $10 free to use on the best networking app around. Give me a call. If you're experiencing sexual issues and need a physical therapy consultation or appointment, Reach out to Eve and make an appointment on pleaseme.online. See all links and info in the show notes.